the beam of timber that is in your own eye? Or how can you say to your brother, let me get the tiny particle out of your eye, when there is a beam, there is the beam of timber in your own eye? You hypocrite, first get the beam of timber out of your own eye, and then you will see clearly to take the tiny particle out of your brother's eye. So having said that, I think maybe you can uh, that sharpen your boomerang, you know, it kind of explains the title, never sharpen your boomerang. Amen. And so, the, the reason I'm preaching on this tonight, I've just noticed something that's been happening in our society, and we've seen it, uh, we've seen it happen in the movie industry, the entertainment industry. We're seeing it happen uh, in politics and even, you know, in the news media. We're seeing uh, where uh, people have done things that have been revealed that were wrong, but then uh, their peers turning on them, it's, it's almost like a school of piranha, and uh, it's, it's just, we're seeing it happen primarily in these three areas publicly, in the entertainment uh, community, uh, um, in the political community and in the, the news media uh, as well. And um, the people need mercy. When something like that happens, some of the things we've seen in the news, uh, the person that's accused of doing the wrong needs mercy. And also the person that was possibly victimized, sometimes, these, sometimes people are actually judged before any facts are, are really brought out. They're really judged without a trial. Uh, in the uh, courts of public opinion, and sometimes thing, it, it's found that the people did not do what they're accused of doing. But uh, uh, it's, the, the people seem to be uh, imploding. It, it seems like we're seeing this all throughout our society. We're seeing uh, people devouring one another when, when really there needs to be Prayer, if a person has committed something, some atrocity or hurt someone, then we need to pray for them, that they would repent and come to Jesus with it and receive forgiveness. And also, for anyone victimized by someone else, we need to pray for them because they've been hurt and they're not going to get healed through a vengeance and getting even. They're only going to get healed through going to the cross of Christ because he's the only one that can really heal the brokenhearted. And he's the only one that can uh, truly set someone free from their sins. And so what I'm seeing here, it reminded me of this discipleship class we had not too long ago when we showed a message by uh, Dutch Sheets and it involved a prophecy that he had given, I believe, in January of 2017, earlier this year. And he uh, had a word from the Holy Spirit. He was actually sharing at Chuck Pierce's uh, a, a conference at his church. And uh, Dutch Sheets had this prophetic word that mercy is the new currency. And as I see all this happening uh, in the uh, public forum, I'm realizing more and more how accurate that word is that uh, Reverend Sheets had from the Holy Spirit mercy is the new currency because the church appears to be the only place where anyone can find mercy. And one reason I wanted to bring this message to us tonight is so that we will be aware of this and this special place we have that God has given us to be an altar of mercy and forgiveness. And this is what the church is here for. And when I say the church, I'm not only talking about our church, but the church as a whole. We n must not get drawn in to this uh, uh, being judgmental and critical uh, toward others. We have to have an altar of mercy and forgiveness in the church of God, the church of the Lord Jesus Christ, in the Lord's glory church here, and all churches of true believers. We, and in our personal lives, we need to provide altars of mercy and forgiveness. And this is what Jesus is warning us about because this is what he came for. He said, I desire, I desire mercy and not sacrifice. And in a, even in wisdom, 
uh, James uh, in, in uh, James chapter 3, I believe it's verse 17, says, But the wisdom that is from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, willing to yield, full of mercy and good fruits, without partiality and without hypocrisy. And so often people are quick to condemn even if they have done things themselves. And that's why I, uh, came, uh, I decided on this title, Never Sharpen Your Boomerang. Because as Jesus said, uh, uh, for just as you judge and criticize and condemn others, you will be judged and criticized and condemned. In accordance with the measure you use to deal out to others, it will be dealt out to you again. And uh, church, if we get wrapped up in this judgmental, critical spirit, it will come back on us. And the church will miss its opportunity to provide something that our country needs desperately and needs more than ever before. You know, what I've noticed is that as our country has gone down a pathway that uh, uh, it, we've, we've gone, uh, we have not been moving up in our moral standard, we've been going down. And as our moral standard has decreased and uh, as sin has increased more and more in our nation, we are also seeing the uh, unforgiveness and judgmentalism increasing at the same time with the other sins of our nation. But you know, getting back to Dutch Sheets' prophetic word that he gave at that conference, mercy is the new currency. We have something that the world doesn't have to give people. We can tell them about the mercy of Jesus Christ, the forgiveness that's available to them through repentance and through taking it to the cross of Christ. His forgiveness and mercy is always there. The throne room of His grace is always open. And the, the, Bible, through, the Bible stresses self-examination rather than examining others. And we need to be very careful about this as believers that we don't get caught up in the spirit of the world and we stay in the spirit of Christ. I didn't have this, I didn't give this one to you, Pam, but I believe I will read it from the Amplified Bible. This is Romans uh, chapter 2, verse 1, and in the previous chapter, uh, Paul is talking about a very sinful Roman culture and many of the sins that they were involved in, uh, including sexual perversion and, all, and idol worship and all kinds of things. And then he says in chapter 2 of Romans, verse 1, Therefore you have no excuse or defense or justification, O man, whoever you are who judges and condemns another, for imposing as judge and passing sentence on another, you condemn yourself because you who judge are habitually practicing the same things that you censure and denounce. And we see this happening uh, even today. Well, thank God we know the mission that God has given His church. And I thank God that uh, we have a good vision here. Our vision is to find purpose in life through loving God and loving people. And we are not a museum for saints. We are a hospital for sinners. And we are a church where sinners are always welcome. There will always be an altar of repentance. And instead of finding condemnation, they will find love. And we will do our best to lead people to the cross of Christ where they can truly find forgiveness, where they can find, uh, find the healing of a broken heart, and where they can truly have their lives changed forever. Amen. So I just wanted to say this is a wonderful opportunity. What we're seeing is for the church to be the church, to be who Jesus Christ says that we should be. I want to uh, read you uh, this. And, and uh, when, when I first became a member of the church, my circle was very big. For it included all who, like myself, had believed. I was happy in the thought that my brethren were many, but having a keen and observant mind, I soon learned that many of my brethren were erring. I could not tolerate any people within my circle, but those who, like myself, were right on all 
points of their understanding of doctrine and biblical doctrine and practice. Two, some made mistakes and sinned. What could I do? I had to do something. I drew my circle again, leaving the publicans and sinners outside, excluding the Pharisees in all their pride, with myself and the righteous and the humble within. I heard ugly rumors about some brethren. I saw then that some of them were worldly-minded. Their thoughts were constantly on things of a worldly nature. So duty-bound to save my reputation, I drew my circle again, leaving those reputable, reputable, spiritually-minded within. I realized in time that only my family and myself remained in the circle. I had a good family, but to my surprise, my family finally disagreed with me. I was always right. A man must be steadfast. I have never been a, a, a factious man. Uh, so in strong determination, I drew my circle again leaving me quite alone. And do you know, unfortunately, that happens to so many people. They get uh, deceived and get in that judgmental and critical spirit and begin to just eliminate one person after another when what we ought to be doing is looking on uh, every opportunity we can to demonstrate the mercy and forgiveness of Jesus to others. And instead of drawing our circle we need to pull, pull in the sinners to where they can find forgiveness. Amen? And find love and find uh, mercy. Mark, you'll appreciate this. I wonder if you can guess who said this. Uh, it, first, the person quotes Colossians 1, 7 to 8. You so learned it from Ephaphras, our beloved fellow servant, he is a faithful minister of Christ in our stead and is our representative in yours. Also, he has informed us of your love in the Holy Spirit. And the person that posted this many years ago went on to say, I like Ephiphras. He goes around speaking good things. He says, I have good news about great things happening with those guys in Colossae. I want to be like Ephiphras, talking about how great someone is behind his or her back. For not only does this please the Lord, but it has an impact on me as well. How? To a very real degree. You are who I say you are when you're not around. You see, if all of you leave here tonight and on your way home talk about what an idiot I am, I will become that person to you the next time we meet. Talk negatively about me and even those things, even if those things are not totally true, that's what I will become in your sight. On the other hand, if you speak well of a person behind his back, that is the way you will tend to view him. The next time you see him, you will approach him with an entirely different mindset than if you had come down on him. The power of words is awesome. For that reason, we must be very careful Gossip good stuff. That's what Ephiphras did. And that was Kathy Chrisman shared that. Uh, it was quite a few years ago, but I, I have that here. That was your wife, Mark. What a, a wonderful uh, message that was. And so I, I kept that. I like to keep jewels like that and go back to them. Re repentance and forgiveness really is what lightens the load of all of us. And we need to have a lifestyle of repentance and we have, need to have a lifestyle of forgiveness and we need to look for the best in one another. And I'm reading to you a lot tonight, but I believe you're getting this and enjoying it. There's an old legend about three men. Each man had two sacks, one tied in, in front of his neck and the other tied on his back. When the first man was asked what was in his sacks, he said, in the sack on my back are all the good things friends and family have done. That way they're hidden from view. In the front sack are all the bad things that have happened to me. 
Every now and then I stop, open the front sack, take the things out, examine them, and think about them. Because he stopped so much to concentrate on all the bad stuff, he really didn't make much progress in life. The second man was asked about his sacks. He replied, in the front sacks are all the good things I've done. I like to see them. So quite often I take them out to show them off to people. The sack in my back, I keep all my mistakes there and carry them all the time. Sure, they're heavy. They slow me down. But you know, for some reason, I can't put them down. When the third man was asked about his sacks, he answered, the sack in front is great. There I keep all the positive thoughts I have about people, all the blessings I've experienced, all the great things other people have done for me. The weight isn't a problem. The sack is like sails of a ship. It keeps me going forward. The sack on my back is empty. There's nothing in it. I cut a big hole in its bottom. And there I put all the bad things I think about myself or hear about others. They go in one end and out the other. So I'm not carrying around any extra weight at all. <laughs> Praise God. Don't you love that? It's repentance and forgiveness cuts the hole in that back sack. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Turn with me to Colossians chapter 3. And I want to uh, begin reading in verse 12. This whole chapter is really, really good, but I'm going to begin reading in verse 12. And this is the advice that uh, Paul gives us. Before I read there, though, I, I do like this. You know, when he talks about get the plank out of your own eye, then you can get the speck out of your brother's eye. See, to get the speck out of your brother's eye. You know, when we, when we, walk in the forgiveness and the gentleness of Jesus Christ and we, and we see someone's got a speck in their eye well first of all we need to be sure we we've, we've taken our own sins to the cross and, and are, are repentant and uh, judging ourselves rather than others not getting into that judgmental and critical spirit because if we do and trying to get that speck out of our brother's eye it's like taking an old rush a, a, a rough washcloth and just tr scrubbing their eyeballs with it <laughs> and, and he might get the speck out and damage their eyes and injure them but I learned this from my parents and I also did it with my kids uh, when I had a speck in my eye and I do it with my own I did it with my own children I take a, a soft handkerchief and roll it up and get a little point there you have them open the eye and you see that little speck and you just barely touch it and that little speck will stick to the end of that handkerchief just every time and you get it out and it doesn't hurt them and it's the, it, not unpleasant. And so we need to pray for that kind of anointing believers to help others. Amen. Listen, and I believe this is what Paul is talking about in Colossians chapter 3, beginning in verse 12, reading from the Amplified Bible. Clothe yourselves, therefore, as God's own chosen ones, his own picked representatives who are purified and holy and well beloved by God himself by putting on behavior marked by tender hearted pity and mercy kind feeling a lowly opinion of yourselves gentle ways and patience which is tireless and long suffering and has the power to endure whatever comes with good temper Verse 13, be gentle and forbearing with one another. And if one has a difference, a grievance, or complaint against another, readily pardoning each other. Even as the Lord has freely forgiven you, so you must also forgive. And above all these, put on love and enfold yourself with the bond of perfectness. perfectness. Well, love is perfect. His love is perfect which binds everything together completely in ideal harmony. And let the peace, soul harmony, which comes from Christ, rule, act as an umpire continually in your hearts, deciding and settling with finality all questions that arise in your minds in that peaceful state, 
to which as members of Christ's one body, you were all so called to live and be thankful, appreciative, giving praise to God always. And you know, I believe, uh, once again, I, I, I'm, I know I'm preaching to the choir tonight, but you know, we all need to hear God's word. And it's a wonderful message. There's not another message like the gospel of Jesus Christ. Nowhere on earth is there, a, 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 in, in no other book will you find a message like the good news about Jesus and about his love and how he came to bring a new kind of love to humanity. And he said, a new commandment I give you that you love one another as I have loved, have loved you, that you also love one another. By this, all will know that you're my disciples if you have love for one another. And that's where we, we have to begin there, uh, in the church, uh, in our families, having love for one another, but then also, you know, that's attractive to the world because the world, and we're seeing it more and more as I started out this message, if you've been watching the news, you see it more and more. Uh, th this love is not being displayed in the world. You only find it in Jesus Christ and you find it uh, in his church and thank God uh, we and other churches can uh, offer an altar of forgiveness and mercy and love to all those who come here amen and we're not kidding ourselves we've all needed that mercy we've all needed that forgiveness the Bible says in Romans 3 23 for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God and if it weren't for Jesus there would be no hope for any of us but because of him, we can be certain that we're going to be spending all eternity with our loving Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. Aren't you thankful for that? And aren't you thankful for the noble calling that he's given all of us to be vessels of his love and to be able to introduce others to him? And I believe in the days ahead as we, as we move, move on and as we, as we see things moving in the direction they're going, there's going to be more and more opportunity for us as believers to uh, be able to reach out and minister not only to people who have sinned against others, but those who have been victimized and hurt by sins as well. Uh, we can be there as an altar of mercy because Jesus is with us. Amen. He's in all of us. He will never leave us. He will never forsake us. And he wants to demonstrate his love through us. And he's here in every service. Where, where two or more are gathered, he's there in the midst of them. And so this, this altar of mercy is always here. His love is always here. His love is flowing through every one of us. And if we'll, if we'll take this message uh, uh, to this hurting world that seems to be imploding on itself, we see it happening uh, everywhere we look. We see it happening. We've got the answer, church. We've got the answer. And they're going to see that if we'll keep walking in love and extending that mercy, that wonderful grace to all those that we come in contact with. God bless you. And I want to ask all of us to uh, bow our heads for prayer, please. And uh, we also want to ask the Internet audience to uh, do the same. And we'd just like to ask everyone here, perhaps there's something that you've done. All have sinned and fall short of the glory of God, for all have. Perhaps there's something that you've done that you just feel so ashamed of. Um, you know, the Lord already knows about it, and he already took that when he went to the cross at Calvary. He, uh, he reached into the, he not only took the sins of his day, he reached into the future and pulled the sins of the world and took them upon himself. And while those sins were coming upon him, uh, there was a uh, darkness upon the earth and that was at a time where it could not have been a, a solar eclipse because of the, the timing of uh, Passover and the position of the moon uh, and the uh, sun it was impossible for that to be a solar eclipse I, I believe that was the darkening uh, as the sins of the world were coming upon our Savior Jesus Christ and he, he took our sins 2,000 years ago when he went to the cross at Calvary he pulled our sins and took them upon himself so that we could have forgiveness, have a new beginning, be forgiven. And uh, he forgets them. They're, they're, 
They're cast as, as far as the east is from the west. They're cast into the sea of forgetfulness. And we can go on with our lives without being condemned. Amen. There is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. Praise the Lord, who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. Glory to God. Hallelujah. If you're uh, here or watching by internet and you're saying, I need this Jesus. I need this forgiveness. I need this new life. I, 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 I'm, I'm so eaten up with guilt. I need, to get, I need to get free of this. Lift your hand. We're going to say a prayer and you can take it to the cross and you can accept Jesus and all he did for you by making a quality decision. Just lift your hand up high wherever you are, whether you're here or whether you're uh, in the internet congregation. And let's all stand to our feet. And let's say this prayer to encourage that person or persons within the hearing of our voice that's answering this uh, call for uh, forgiveness and for a new life in Christ Jesus. And also, uh, for all of us here, as we say this prayer together, if any of us have anything that we need to ask God for forgiveness. As we say this prayer, receive that forgiveness that's already been paid for uh, uh, for you. And also, if we need to forgive anyone, that's the only way we can be healed is to forgive them. Uh, let's do that as well. So say this with me. Heavenly Father, have mercy on me, a sinner. I repent and ask forgiveness for all my sins I also offer forgiveness to all those who have sinned against me Jesus I accept you now and forever as my personal Lord and Savior come into my heart take charge of my life give me a new life a new beginning in Jesus name Amen. Amen. Let's give the, the Lord a hand clap. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Aren't you glad you know Jesus? You know, there's, uh, that's the most important decision any of us have ever made was to make that choice to choose Jesus. No more important decision than anyone can ever make than to accept Jesus as their personal Lord and Savior. You know, I believe that there's somewhere someone surrendered their, gave their heart to Jesus tonight, said that prayer with us. And we just want to encourage you uh, that if you live in this area, uh, I'm Pastor Tom Battle. This is the Lord's Glory Church. We're in Humble, Texas, and our website is glorychurch.com. Again, that's glorychurch.com. We would love to invite you. If you don't have a home church, we'd love to welcome you uh, out here to become a part of our church. And you'd be welcome here. Again, uh, glorychurch.com is the website. Service times, directions on how to get here. Also, there's seven free books available to you on that website. Just click on the free books button. And uh, we're so thankful that you were with us tonight. Well, let's just lift our hands. And uh, Lord, we just ask you to fill us with the Holy Spirit. Just, just lift your hand. Just ask the Lord to fill you to overflowing with the Holy Spirit. Refill, to be refilled with the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you, Lord, for filling us to overflowing with the Holy Spirit. If anyone has a word from the Holy Spirit, feel free to give it. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. We praise you, Lord. We just don't want to close the service, Lord, till we're sure you've done all you want to do here. Thank you, Jesus. We've had some wonderful words that have come forth in recent services. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Just have your way here tonight, Holy Spirit. Have your way here, Lord. This is the Lord's glory, church. It's your church, Lord. Hallelujah. Praise God. I'm just hearing where the Spirit of the Lord is, there's liberty. And I believe there's been an uh, 
in this service tonight, there's been an outpouring of freedom and liberty by the Holy Spirit. I just sense it. I know he's done that. Not only for us, I believe for those, that internet congregation as well. Thank you, Jesus. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there's liberty. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Well, God bless you. Thank you so much for coming out tonight. And uh, we're going to have uh, the, the women are meeting. And they'll be meeting in the uh, youth building. Uh, the uh, ham finished... Uh, uh, the use of the building and uh, got the stuff in there out to needy people and so we ha they're still they are still going with the Harvey Relief at Ham though so if you know of anyone that needs help that's one place they can go and receive help and uh, they've been